Welcome to this digital learning platform of Department of College of Education. Today in this video, we will start the discussion of William Shakespeare's play as you like it. In this video, we will make an introduction to the play. Among the great comedies of Shakespeare, as you like it is one of the important and a model plays written by Shakespeare. So attempting to understand as you like it is a kind of an attempt to understand William Shakespeare as a playwright of comedy. His principles of comedy or writing comedy are at its best in producing this play. Yes, before going to deal with the play as you like it, let us understand some basic concepts. That is, what is a comedy? We know plays are categorized as comedies, tragedies, tragic comedies. What is a comedy? Yeah, we know that a comedy is a type of drama which aims at creating laughter and giving amusement to the audience. The purpose here is to create laughter and giving amusement. Unlike a tragedy, a comedy does not involve a very serious plot with the, with the grand story where uh, the misfortune of the central character uh, or uh, his uh, uh, ignorance of something make him fall in life. And finally, the play ends with a very sad note, often with the death of uh, uh, the important characters. That's a tragedy. But when come to a comedy, it ends happily, usually, usually uh, with a conflict becoming resolved. That means a conflict is always there in uh, both the plays, both the types of plays, like uh, that is tragedy and uh, comedy, among comedies, that conflict becomes, ends happily, what we say, denouement, denouement of the play is resolution of the conflict. There are different types of comedies, you know, romantic comedies, pastoral comedies, satiric comedies, or even comedy of humors, comedy of manners, comedy of menace. See, when we look at the English history of English literature, we have variety of experiments in comedies also. What is this? What are these? Romantic comedy is, which is a comedy which revolves, sorry, which involves a love story ending with a happy union of uh, uh, the lovers crossing all difficulties. It's basically a love story which involves a conflict as well as a happy end. If the romantic comedy or such kind of comedy is placed in a pastoral context, that becomes a pastoral comedy also. When come to a satiric comedy, for example, we have Oscar Wilde who wrote satire comedies. Uh, the importance of being earnest, for example, is a satiric comedy of Victorian society which satirizes the manners of the Victorian society. That means you observe here, satire also say, tells you it ridicules the loopholes and it lampoons the weaknesses in a system by attacking the deviations from the accepted social order. And we have the comedy of manners of the 17th century. Uh, they deal with the uh, vicissitudes of young lovers, their uh, effort to uh, arrange uh, their own marriage through various interviews, plots of love. Then we have farce, another type. Farce is a kind of uh, play, it's a comedy which provokes simple and hearty laughter but using a very highly exaggerated caricature type of characters. For example, um, you have mime shows or certain kind of uh, uh, acts where a physical activity uh, or physical comedy uh, created out of the um, behavior of characters where farce is uh, evident. 
maybe slipping on a banana um, peel uh, and others laughing at him. Such kind of examples probably I can give. Farce is a different kind which uh, um, create laughter but it is highly exaggerated. And we have comedy of humors that goes back to uh, Ben Johnson's of the uh, 16th century. Ben Johnson uh, wrote uh, comedy of humors which is a result of uh, um, uh, variations in the four uh, humors um, uh, in human body. Uh, and then he, like a comedy of menace that probably appeared or uh, became popular in the 1950s uh, like the birthday party we have heard of that uh, such kind of place so likewise variety of comedies are there and uh, the interesting thing here is that in course of the history of these comedies we see many playwrights took shelter in William Shakespeare and blossomed taking their support from William Shakespeare. Thus, a very pioneering figure of those uh, comedies and uh, drama uh, in general is William Shakespeare to English uh, uh, drama, English theatre. Therefore, studying theatre is like entering the very encyclopedia of English drama because he is a representative figure for that matter that... Uh, he is the one who laid the foundation stone, it looks so, right? Because we have other university bits also in the same line. Therefore, studying uh, William Shakespeare as a playwright is interesting thing. As a playwright, we see Shakespeare holds a very distinct position in English literature. His career as a dramatist began actually roughly around uh, 18, uh, 1590s as a member of the uh, Lord Chamberlain's company of uh, players called the King's Men after the accession of James I in uh, 1603. They were known as King's Men. Lord Chamberlain's company of players. But later we see he as he became uh, mature in playwright playwriting, uh, he became a full-time playwright through his own theatre named The Globe. The Globe then was also The Globe uh, for all variety of experiments in drama. He dedicated to create his classical dramatic works for another 20 years in Globe. I think uh, we can mark the date of 1613. Till then, 1612 or 13, uh, the, his fantastic comedies, his fantastic plays appeared uh, through that. Um, but unfortunately, uh, when the Globe Theatre was burned, in 1613, most of the documents of uh, him, it is said that most of his documents were burnt. Therefore, there is no clear uh, evidence or uh, about the number of plays written by him or uh, details regarding further details regarding his plays. But whatever may be the fact, we can see a a great uh, glimmering light which shone. Uh, so bright in the history of English literature, that is uh, Shakespeare, William Shakespeare. Uh, first folio of uh, his uh, works appeared in 1623, which consisted of about 37 plays, and others also say claim to have claimed that uh, he has he wrote about 39 plays. But nevertheless, whatever may be the number, each works, each work of William Shakespeare is a testimony of excellence. Anyhow, we have Shakespeare's comedies. Uh, Shakespeare's comedies are uh, mm, about uh, 14. They are uh, uh, appeared in, first, in the first folio of his plays. The plays are particularly mm, humorous. They, they, they follow humor and they are based on some conflict but ending happily with the marriage. But interesting thing is, unlike uh, his tragedies, the conflict here is resolved before any serious harm taking place. Most of the things. So, for example, even tragic comedies are there like The Tempest. Their conflict is there but it ends happily at the end. The, we, we face tragedy in the beginning of Prospero um, in exile. But, uh, sorry, um, yeah, Prospero in exile. But uh, it ends happily. His comedies represented a significant departure from the classical comedy. That is another thing noted here. Because in 
classical comedies they opened with some already established pair of lovers but in shakespeare's comedies uh, he doesn't uh, um, make them may uh, make the plays based on some established lovers instead he placed his plays on the uh, plot uh, of wooing the uh, love wooing um, the lover itself wooing the love itself oh, the process of uh, making love finding one's mate so he also used the disguise that means hiding one's actual appearance disguise as a a uh, significant plot device that adds further level of complication in the play that in also creates a rich kind of dramatic irony you can disguise hiding one's uh, real identity and appearing as something um, that is uh, another important technique and audience who knows uh, uh, more than the characters can laugh at the amusing uh, predicaments that the characters get themselves into with their own foolishness that is another observation so shakespeare's as you like is this for example a perfect example of comedy because it allows it uses sorry it uses all it follows all these uh, uh, shakespearean traditions of comedy when come to shakespeare's as you like it as a comedy it is actually based on thomas lodge university of thomas lodge prose rosalind published in a uh, 1590 in that uh, uh, yeah the play was uh, based on that and performed around 1598 to 1600 and it published in the first folio in 1623 the play is a romantic comedy with a the theme of love as i told you in the beginning it's a comedy where uh, lovers face difficulty in uh, their union but the resolution of the difficulties at the end and the happy union of the lovers is the theme so there the, therefore it's a romantic comedy and interestingly it is a pastoral comedy also shakespeare wants to set the play uh, in the pastoral context therefore he chooses the forest of arden with the, uh, its rustic atmosphere with shepherds and sheep and in the round so by placing it in the forest of arden uh, shakespeare makes another attempt there uh, because the play opens with the context in the court of uh, duke ferdinand and then it goes to the forest of arden that makes a kind of contrast between two worlds and uh, another important uh, thing which uh, makes this play a comedy is the presence of touchstone and jacques the finest comic creations of shakespeare touchstone is a, a fool but shakespeare's fools are not fools but they are a kind of philosophers and we find that philosophy in jacques also he is a melancholy philosopher anyhow thus the play is a comedy uh, then when we come to the setting of the play the play is in a five act it has two major setting the play opens with uh, duke uh, frederick's court in france where uh, duke frederick has uh, he dethroned uh, his brother the rightful duke in uh, senior look at the very first line the the v- v- very concept here that it introduces a conflict where uh, duke frederick the younger brother of uh, duke senior dethroned him and created the conflict uh, or the trouble for uh, duke senior and the people who followed duke senior when uh, duke senior was uh, exiled from the throne or uh, from the court he went in search of the forest of arden as shelter where he settled down with his followers in exile there the most of the part of the play takes place in the major major part, major part of the play takes place in the forest of arden thus it may becomes a pastoral comedy because in the forest of arden the setting is a pastoral setting with shepherds and their love and all that thus the action of the characters are dramatically affected by the place the places they inhabit this is where shakespeare is different we find if they are in the court their behavior is one way but when they shifted to the forest of arden the entire uh, um hazel entire phoniness or pretense is replaced by the pastoral uh, calm cool atmosphere of the trustic life 
it changes the behavior of the wicked characters also thus the change in the setting is a kind of or choosing the two setting is a kind of contrasting two worlds one is that of the world of the court representing the town and the other is the world of the uh, rustic uh, the forest of arden representing the pastoral world or a peaceful the countryside england thus uh, by contrasting both he also contrasts the two types of human natures the human nature of uh, uh, the people in the at the court the way they behaved and the necessity of a very ideal kind of life that you can see in the forest of arden thus the setting itself is a very uh, clever setting used by uh, william shakespeare when we come to the characters in the uh, play we have duke senior who is the main character and his daughter rosalind she is the central um, female character rosalind later she disguises herself as ganymede after her exile from the court as i told you in the uh, beginning um, disguise is a technique used by shakespeare he uses that in the character rosalind she becomes ganymede when she gets gets her uh, entry into the forest of arden and we have duke's brother frederick his daughter celia celia is uh, later um, in the later part of the play as she accompanies rosalind or uh, i mean god ganymede she transforms herself or she changes she disguises herself as eliana at the forest of arden and we have sir roland de boss though he doesn't appear but he's uh, values are upheld and his sons orlando de boys and oliver de boys and jacques de boys there are three and the court clown uh, uh, touchstone and duke's uh, faithful lord jacques we have court clown fool touchstone who accompanies rosalind to the forest of uh, arden and along with him already senior duke senior's faithful lord jacques is at the forest of arden and there are shepherds in the forest of arden named silvius and his beloved is phoebe and we have other characters like uh, amiens charles william adam corin and libio so these are some of the other characters who are uh, uh, other supporting uh, uh, characters uh, appear amid uh, in the middle of the scenes then come to the plot the plot of the play the set, the plot is the storyline alwa events we will together in the play and uh, the plot opens with duke senior banishing sorry uh, duke frederick banishing duke senior and vanished by duke frederick he leaves duke senior lives in the forest of arden with his followers that's the plot line and we find uh, his daughter rosalind also leaves Uh, for arden for the forest of arden disguised as a man named ganymede what led her to leave that is there uh, that is a situation where she appreciated uh, um, or uh, orlando's bravery in a fight with uh, the court wrestler named charles uh, orlando being uh, the son of rolandy boys who was rolandy boys who was uh, um duke senior's friend made duke frederick the the ex, the present uh, duke of the court uh, the, the of the kingdom uh de, you know angry with uh, rosaline so therefore he he orders her to leave the court and she therefore we see um, exiles or she goes out of that place to the forest of arden in the forest of arden yeah along with her we also notice frederick's daughter celia who was uh, uh, who accompanies um ganymede that is rosalind as eliana one thing i would like to say here again that once when duke's duke senior was banished because of the friendship between rosalind and celia rosalind though the daughter of duke senior was allowed to stay with celia that means the friendship that uh, uh, highlights is highlighted here okay then are the relationship i think even relationship it is its relationship also that is highlighted here 
then rosalind realizes orlando's love for her when he when she enters the forest of arden and uh, they the com the com, the plot become complex because she is ganymede now then she has uh, disguised herself as ganymede how can she express her real identity and uh, her love not possible therefore the com- the plot becomes complex at the end of the play she reveals her real identity and uh, marries him along with the weddings of many other characters who are facing the difficulty for example uh, marriage of our uh, wedding of celia and uh, oliver likewise okay orlando also had the threat from oliver uh, who is uh, his elder brother uh, who actually planned uh, or plotted to uh, injure orlando using charles in that fight but orlando's win in the uh, fight is a kind of winning of rosalind's heart thus the plot uh, is made when we come to the themes love is the first theme in the play because it's love between uh, love in terms of friendship love in terms of the uh, relationship we notice that for example love between rosalind and uh, orlando is highlighted very much and we have also got the love different types of love uh, one is a realistic one one is a very imaginative one a realistic is between touchstone and uh, we have um, uh, uh, he likes uh, a character named uh, uh, of course we see pastoral imaginary imagination uh, or imaginary love uh, Uh, i'm sorry there is that the pastoral love between uh, silvius and phoebe and uh, uh, another love story we have uh, that is of uh, uh, oliver and uh, the, the disguised uh, uh, celia she's disguised uh, as uh, eliana and uh, we also have uh, <coughs> we also have the uh, love story of touchstone the fool and uh, who chases the william a character named william and then he falls in love with uh, uh, adri right Ad- adri uh but we observe here that uh, the love story of uh, uh, touchstone and adri is different from that of others because there's very practical thinking very realistically um a touchstone by uses the language um which is uh, focusing on that practical part of life anyhow uh, we basically notice here uh, other uh, various sides of the concept law and how love is uh, important in life and that's the theme and uh, next uh, important theme in the story is transformation and adjustment we see transformation in the behavior of duke frederick in the story and similarly it happens in the case of uh, oliver so transformation and getting adjusted to the situation is another theme contrasting between the royal life and rustic life that because the play opens with the royal life in the court of uh, duke frederick and it goes to the rustic life pastoral world of uh, the forest of arden and a clear contrast between both is brought in and the discussion between the the dialogues of, of the characters also focus on that moreover another important thing is deception which we see in case of duke ferdinand who de- who deceives uh, his brother duke senior and we also have cheating right cheated his elder brother duke senior and we have disguise how disguise is for they how human beings identity you know hide their real identity is indicated through the disguised characters and here we find rosalind disguised as ganymede and uh, celia disguised herself as uh, eliana most important a common theme that shakespeare uses in all the plays is forgiveness and reconciliation that is very important because at the end of the play this provides uh, a solution to the situation makes the play comedy because here you find duke senior forgives everyone and they reconcile the duke uh, frederick and duke senior 
ಆರ್ ಈವನ್ ಒಲಿವರ್ ಇನ್ ಅರ್ಲ್ಯಾಂಡೋ ದೇ ಆಲ್ ರೀಕನ್ಸೀಲ್ ಕ್ಷಮಾಪಣೆ ಒಬ್ಬರಿಗೆ ಒಬ್ಬರಿಗೆ ಕೊಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ಅವರು ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಆಲ್ ದ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಯುನೈಟೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಪ್ಲೇ ಎಂಡ್ಸ್ ರಿಸಾಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿಲಿ ದಸ್ ವಿ ಸಿ ದ ಪ್ಲೇ ಈಸ್ ಅನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಲೆಂಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಕಾಮಿಡಿ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೇಡ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಪ್ಲಾಟ್ ಡೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ದ ಮಾಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಆಫ್ ವಿಲಿಯಮ್ ಶೇಕ್ಸ್ಪಿಯರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಮಿಕ್ ಜೀನಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಸ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದ ವೆಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ಪ್ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ಲೇ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಫೈನೆಸ್ಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಲಿಯಮ್ ಶೇಕ್ಸ್ಪಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇ ವಿತ್ ಆ್ಯಪ್ಟ್ ಸೆಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ವೆರಿ ಸೂಟಬಲ್ ಸೆಟ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿವಿಡ್ ವೆರೈಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರೈಸೇಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆರಿ ಕನ್ವಿನ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಕಾಮಿಕ್ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಲ್ ಥೀಮ್ಸ್ ಯಾ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ವಾಚ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಎ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪ್ಲೇ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೊಸೀಡಿಂಗ್ ವೀಡಿಯೋಸ್ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ವೀಡಿಯೋಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೀ